Hello students, in this lecture we are going to discuss the language of paradox written by Clint Brooks and which is a deciding uh, essay of his uh, new critic, thoughts of his new criticism and uh, what he feels or what are his views uh, in this essay. Uh, over criticism or criticizing a poem or a text or a novel. So this is the first part of um, the series of this lecture in which we will be discussing the introductory part of the language of paradox. Uh, the essay has been taken from the well wrought urn which was written in 1947 by Clint Brooks. Here, Clint Brooks advocates the centrality of paradox as a way of understanding and interpreting poetry. In his best known works, The Language of Paradox, The Well Wrote Urn, 1947, and Modern Poetry and Tradition, 1939, Brooks helped to formulate formalist criticism by emphasizing the interior life of a poem and codifying the principles of close reading. In The Language of Paradox, Brooks establishes the crucial role of paradox by demonstrating that paradox is the language appropriate and inevitable to poetry. This is because referential language is incapable of representing and the specific message of a poet and the poet must make up his language as he goes. Since words are mutable and meaning shifts when words are placed in relation to one another. So, books advocates this, that paradox is necessary in the central of a poem to understand and interpret the poetry that how will you understand how will you interpret the poetry uh, he uh, describes or he helps us understanding here now what is a paradox let's have a brief introduction of paradox uh, if you want to read paradox at length i have already uh, you know there is a lecture uh, into on my channel uh, over paradox in literature paradox is a statement that appears at first to be contradictory but upon reflections it makes sense paradoxes are statements that seem contradictory unbelievable or absurd but in some sense are nevertheless true it functions as a method of literary composition and analysis which involves examining apparently contradictory statements and drawing conclusions uh, either to reconcile them or to explain their presence. Clan Brooks, an active member of the new critical movement, outlines the use of reading poems through paradox as a method of critical interpretation. So paradox is a literary statement which on surface seems to be contradictory but when we have a close reading, it makes a sense. So, uh, and it also functions as a method of literary composition and analysis, which involves examining apparently contradictory statements and drawing conclusions, either to reconcile them or to explain their presence. Okay. So, paradox is necessary. Paradox in poetry means that tension at the surface of a verse can lead to apparent contradictions and hypocrisies. His seminal, now, in his seminal essay, The Language of Paradox, which lays out Brooks' argument for centrality of paradox by demonstrating that paradox is the language appropriate and inevitable to poetry. The argument is based on the contention that referential language is too vague for the specific masses a poet expresses so he must make up his language as he goes so if he gives references that i have uh, taken this or this line from the this or this um, source or etc uh, it will make the poem more complicated rather he should make his uh, language understand uh, to be understood by the to be understood by the readers as he goes now this, Brooks argues, is because words are mutable and meaning shifts when words are placed in relation to one another. So words itself, a word itself does not have any meaning, rather it shifts when they are placed in relation to one another. They have meaning, they have proper meaning, they have deep meaning when they are put together with one another. In this essay, The Language of Poor Paradox, Clint Brooks uh, emphasizes how the language of poetry is different from that of sciences. 
claiming that he is interested now seeing that paradoxes spring from the very nature of the poet's language it is a language in which connotations play as great a part as the denotations so connotations and denotations both are necessary when you are writing something and i do not mean that connotations are important as supplying some sort sort of frill or trimming something external to the real matter in hand i mean that the poet does not use a notation at all as a scientist may properly be said to do so the poet within limits has to make up his language as he goes now in this passage brooks stresses that poetic language is uh, inherently different from scientific language because the poet constructs his language as he goes and defines his own rules rather science is based on particular rules and the scientist has to follow those rules already existing but a poet has to make his own rule to define the poet then has control over language and thus must take an active role in the shaping of what literature means the poet then is not limited to the denotations of words but instead revel in the possible connotation of the words the individual poet is given a great deal of power then in the process of knowledge making the reader is isolated from the production of meaning so the production of meaning how the meaning has been produced the reader does not have to do anything with that rather what is the meaning the reader has to focus on that only so in this essay language of paradox how a paradox can interpret and what examples he has taken the examples from wordsworth he has taken examples from dun so we'll be discussing these examples in the next lectures so that's all for this lecture language of paradox how a paradox can interpret the language thank you thank you very much